Hi guys, Dr. Brockenshire. For this year, 2021, I want to bring you a relatively regular series that gives you, the health consumer, all of the same information that I give to doctors and other healthcare providers from the standpoint of telling scientific truths and showing you research that supports everything we're talking about. Unlike what the media and most web sources want to show you, this is not an influencer approach. This has nothing to do with social media. This is my attempt to give you the best information that you need to create the best health possible. So enjoy. It increased the immunity of a person. It also is a muscle relaxant. Very renowned as a as a sexual tonic. How much would you pay for an anti-cancer, anti-stress, you know, happiness inducing natural product? Ashwagandha is an increasingly popular herb these days in the roughly $9 billion U.S. herbal supplement market. This is how it looks grown in the field. You can currently find it in a variety of products, including lattes, pills, and even moisturizing creams. And recently, my wife even bought a bottle of conditioner with ashwagandha in it. It made me wonder, is this herb legit? Of course can it's it legit. cancer and make my hair a little more voluminous? No, it won't it help your help hair. The current definition of ashwagandha involves another. Apparently, this of fellow believes that research ashwagandha investigation can be done strictly on the internet. That supposedly helps the body adapt and deal better with stressors. These products have not been regulated by the Food and Drug the Administration. The FDA has no approval no over natural medicines. Their effects, but. They of course, the FDA has not approved the COVID vaccine either. And have a tradition spanning centuries. Ashwagandha is a drug which we use as Ayurvedic medicine. The history of Ayurveda spans about almost 3,000 to 5,000 5, years back. Although the use of these herbs in India dates back over thousands of years, the term adaptogen was coined much later in 1947. The original research on adaptogen starts in the late 1940s in the Soviet Union. And um, basically, a Soviet researcher who was basically funded by the military was trying to find a way to create better soldiers, better factory workers, and eventually better cosmonauts. According to herbalists, adaptogens are herbs which support and improve our body's ability to respond to stress internally. So this is ashwagandha. It's really the root that's the medicine. Herbalists say ashwagandha and other adaptogens are supposed to work by targeting Scientists the hypothalamic say it beyond herbalists. If you watch my presentation day. after this, you this will see the evidence that explains stress. what it an adaptogen is. basically acting like you're going to be under stress. And it's a bit like a stress vaccine. And that's what adaptogens are doing for us. They're basically saying stress is coming. Get ready. Be prepared. I sometimes refer to ashwagandha as a mesmerizer, as a hypnotist. So if you picture yourself as a snake that's a bit out of control, flailing, right? And who doesn't feel like that sometimes? Um, ashwagandha is the snake charmer, right? Ashwagandha is that snake charmer just to bring you back into center. In 2020, there were twice as many studies published on ashwagandha in the National Institute of Health then in 2010. But that might be less telling than it seems. Just because something is in PubMed, just because you mean, haven't heard of it, Randy, it's, doesn't it's mean it's not real. Process. And it also seems quite confined. I will present to you dozens of studies that are peer-reviewed, um, and also what I'll call fringe studies, which are either groups of people or small journals that I just had not heard of Just because you haven't heard of it doesn't mean it's not real. What makes you the expert in adaptogens? Your or botanicals. Or your, need, or your, your medical degree does nothing an because it to make you relevant in this conversation. So, you know, I mean, honestly, we could call that, like, I just need an adaptogen, a glass or two every night at dinner. It's helping me adapt. I think it's, it's a much more clever way of selling it, but I wasn't sure how it really helps you rebalance. What's You're really impressive is the business volume discussion. related to ashwagandha. 
Mainstream sales of the herb rose by over 45% between 2018 and 2019, amounting to $10.8 million. I am not discounting that herbs are these powerless things. Herbs are potent. What's going on now, I think, is just the 21st century version of what's been going on since hormones, since the word hormone was coined in 1905. Ever since that first discovery that said this is how hormones Medicine work, still doesn't understand there have been people hormones work. Selling things to say, but take this and it'll keep you in balance. And who doesn't want to be in balance these days? As the science is not there yet to find a definitive answer on the efficacy of this super herb, I decided to ask the only question on which everyone seems to have a clear answer. No, it will not help. Will it help my hair? I have not seen any studies showing that ashwagandha has any benefit in a shampoo. Uh, and I have not seen in any of the texts uh, that it can beautify the skin or it can, be, uh, it can do better to the scalp. Guess not. Okay. You're looking at ashwagandha. I thought this is a perfect uh, way to open our discussion today. This is a, a training session. Um, I know we don't get a chance to get together live and dive deep into things anymore, but soon, or at least we're told soon. I'm not sure what to make of our recent statements today. So today we're going to talk about Withania somnifera, which is ashwagandha. Now, if you've been with Mediherb for a while and you've been using Mediherb, you remember the product Withania complex, which is ashwagandha complex. The reason they changed the name is because so many people here in the U.S. and Canada didn't know what withania was. But withania is ashwagandha, okay? So just to clear up that confusion, if you're doing medical review or looking at research, always search both names. <clears throat> uh, it's always good to search the botanical name, withania. Uh, if you search ashwagandha, you're going to get a lot of multi-level marketing garbage. So don't do that. If you have any questions about tonight's stuff, feel free to email me down here. Uh, it's innovativehealthdrs.com. And also check out the YouTube page for Innovative Health DRS. It'll come up, Innovative Health Solutions on YouTube. I've put up a bunch of goofy interviews lately from around the country. So with that being said, uh, I mean, at this point, do we need a disclaimer? Probably. This is what's going on. I'm telling you uh, basically what I have found in the research and how I use these plant compounds based on 20 years of experience and global medical research. I am not a uh, academic in this case. I'm not a biochemist, although we work with biochemistry and I'm not telling you to use this to treat anything. Hopefully you're going to use these concepts to help yourself and then you can help your patients. All right. In order to understand what we're going to do tonight, <clears throat> I want to refresh you on some basic pillars. Um, guys probably remember that whole concept of seven-minute abs, and then somebody came out with six-minute abs, and then somebody said, what about five-minute abs? And, you know, as the story goes, there's no way, man, you can't do abs in five minutes. When it comes to healthcare, uh, abs are important. But uh, when you're designing pillars around healthcare, you want to make it simple. So these are the three pillars of healthcare that I follow. These are my three pillars of wellness. And it simplifies everything. Now, I know you're looking at it going, but Doc, there's, there's five pillars. We combine them. Keep it simple. So ashwagandha is going to fall under the immunomodulation pillar and the cellular activation slash strengthening pillar. Doesn't do a ton for detox and drainage. However, as you'll see when we look at the, the, the uses and the research on it, there is the potential that based on its ability to impact the endocannabinoid system, there may be a drainage component here. So words not finished on that story. Very rarely can we find one single plant compound that can hit two to three of these things. So that's pretty exciting. So some things we have to clear up because it's a new year. Hopefully you're designing a new you, new system, new business model. I don't know about you guys, but the business model continues to change and morph and adapt and get creative. I never thought I'd open a fulfilling station in my reception area, uh, but it is very unique. And we are up against the wall as professional healthcare providers, particularly those of us who are using professional grade products, because 
there's very little regulation when it comes to plant medicine. And so when you look at what your patients are bringing you, a lot of them might be using ashwagandha in other products. But you're going to learn tonight that most of the ashwagandha on the market is garbage, primarily because it's not tested or standardized to its primary components. And as you'll see in the literature, unless the ashwagandha you're using has the withanolide compounds in it, it's not going to work. So you can take ashwagandha, but if you don't know if it has any withanolides, then you don't know if it's going to do anything. And I liken that to saying, well, give me a cup of coffee. And they give you decaf. I'm like, well, I didn't want decaf. I wanted the whole coffee. Oh, you just said coffee. So be, be aware that a lot of companies out there are using ashwagandha and they have no idea if it's good ashwagandha or if it has any withanolides in it. Now, one of the driving factors behind that is straight up marketing. Okay, so there's a study on ashwagandha that says it's amazing. They're going to start putting it in everything. And I'm sure patients will tell you, well, I drink ashwagandha tea. Well, I have it in my shake. It's not real ashwagandha. Okay, so one of the beautiful things that Medirb has done for us, and they've done this, you know, for over three decades, is create products that we can reference back to the seed, back to the dirt it was growing, grown in. We know that what we're being told that's on the label is actually in the product. And so that's why we're going to continue to use Medirb. With this botanical inf information, um, you expect to produce results like the literature says we can, based on experience, based on other people's practices and results. You're going to need standardized, real herbal tools to do that. And one of the roadblocks we've had with ashwagandha was we've only had it in liquid form. While it was a one-to-one -one extract and very potent, some people are hesitant to use liquids. Um, it's not always cost effective, but it's extremely therapeutic. And what Medirb has done for us is give us another option using a tablet form. So it is available from Standard Process now in the United States. And I highly recommend you check it out on their website. Now, if you learn like I do, feel free to open another window, go to the website, open all the new information on, on uh, ashwagandha. And I've given you some other good documents that are available so you don't have to go digging for them. When it comes to figuring out how we're going to use the best stuff, it always helps to know the who, what, where, when, and why. So Medirb takes care of the who, what, where, and when. The doctor has to figure out the why. And so that's what I'm doing for you tonight. I love talking about this stuff. Super excited to get a tablet. Last year, the year before, we got black cumin seed forte. The year before that, we got turmeric forte. You're probably, see, probably noticing the trend, forte. As I've been saying for years, as people, we need to get stronger. And in order to get stronger, you have to get used to things. So ashwagandha technically is defined as an adaptogen. All right. And if you're new to this stuff, do some research on adaptogens. Lazarev was the first guy to use the word adaptogen. Juan Cellier kind of figured out when he was doing all his adrenal stress research that we each have a limited amount of adaptive reserves. And in Chinese medicine, they say that we are born with a finite amount of kidney chi. So are we really only born with so much power? And the debate rages on. My piece on that debate is, of course, not. One of the things we can do to help the body refill or recharge is to use adaptogenic herbs and ashwagandha being one of the kings of the adaptogens. Now, when you start working with plants, some plants are masculine, some plants are feminine. It just depends on your experience with them. And in my opinion, I find ashwagandha very masculine, even though it has a lot of feminine potential. Conversely, I find uh, rhodiola very feminine. And so as you think about those things and think about them before it's illegal, based on Nancy Pelosi's latest ramblings, each 
plant compound has a masculine and a feminine or a yin and a yon component to it. And ashwagandha is one of those things that, while I think it's masculine, its feminine properties are to protect and preserve. So ashwagandha can help recharge your batteries without stimulating you. All right. So remember, ashwagandha is a recharger, but not a stimulant. If we were to define what an adaptogen is, the best word I could come up with is this one right here. It's tropho restorative, meaning it helps the body do repair and recovery, but it also teaches the body to do a better job next time. Okay. Um, this plant chemistry is pretty cool, and scientists are still trying to understand these processes in the body. For example, when you look at echinacea, you could say that it's adaptogenic from an immune point of view, but that adaptogenic piece is because of how echinacea works with the HPA axis and the endocannabinoid system. Hemp oil could also be considered adaptogenic, even though it's a tonic to the endocannabinoid system. So ashwagandha fits in there neatly. Uh, and if you think of where we are right now as a society, we're all a little fried. We're burnt out. Uh, I keep hearing really successful people telling me that they're questioning their existence every day, which is an interesting point of view. So what's going to happen is ashwagandha is going to help us charge our batteries quicker and more efficiently. Okay, if you're doing adrenal stress testing, you're doing saliva testing or Dutch testing, remember that ashwagandha is going to help modulate cortisol. It doesn't raise it or lower it. It helps modulate uh, compared to, say, a tonic, which will stimulate it. So down here, we've got licorice. Licorice can drive cortisol. Technically, what it does is it, uh, it slows down cortisol's half-life. So licorice helps the body use cortisol longer, whereas ashwagandha and eleuthero help the body uh, conserve and be more efficient. All right. So we're going to be talking about eleutherococcus today. Uh, for my older friends out there, you might know that as Siberian ginseng. In the middle, if you really wanted to light a fire, you could use Korean ginseng. But we've got some issues with the Korean ginseng right now. As you'll start to discover around the world, there are supply chain issues as it pertains to plant materials and other nutritionals. Uh, one of them being tribulus, which you've probably noticed if you use tribulus. The other one being good Korean ginseng, clean Korean ginseng. And rhodiola right now is hard to get. So... Let's go with ashwagandha because we can get that anywhere and Mediherb can make sure that it's going to be good ashwagandha. So for 2021, we're going to be looking heavy at ashwagandha, eleuthero, and rhodiola. All right. <clears throat> Specifically, these things work by sparing and delaying stress. All right. So if you're having an overwhelming stress response, an adaptogen can buffer it down. But if your stress response isn't good enough, an adaptogen will bring it up, all right? So it's, it's an over-under effect, which is why I think, I mean, who's not going to need ashwagandha right now? You're probably used to using ashwagandha in the ashwagandha complex, which was designed back in the 90s. And the ashwagandha complex is your blend of ashwagandha, Korean ginseng, licorice, and skullcap. And you'll also find skullcap in the Neviton formula. So while the ashwagandha complex is good, a lot of us are so burnt, turnt, twisted, and worn out that when you take the ashwagandha complex, it's too stimulating and it, it kind of throws off your vibration, if you know what I mean. It can be agitating in some people. Uh, to use straight ashwagandha would be much more calming. So if you've ever used a, a blend of herbs with ashwagandha and it made somebody anxious, that means that their adrenals need a lot more love than they're getting. Uh, one of the things I like to do with the ashwagandha complex 
is postmenopausal women do really well with that and the wild yam complex. <laughs> but if you're cycling female, I'm going to suggest you lean more on the new ashwagandha forte and femco for stress. And at this point, just put it, Neviton in everybody's bag when they leave the office because yeah, they're going to need it. So one of the questions I had when we were talking about adaptogens years ago is, well, how do they work? And so digging through the research, I found some cool stuff. I actually found this slide from a presentation I did in 2008 for Mediherb. And so I forgot I did this, but I had to explain adaptogens to Mediherb. And it was pretty cool. Um, so think of it this way. Chemically, an adaptogen improves the biosynthesis of proteins. So everything you're trying to do with diet and exercise, adaptogens make it work better. With carbohydrates, they help you use them better. So ashwagandha can help you use carbs better. It also protects the body from um, an overburden due to steroid usage, particularly steroids that are produced on the inside. So when your body makes its own steroids, adaptogens like ashwagandha can protect you from that stress. If you have somebody on steroids regularly, go ahead and put them on ashwagandha. We'll get to dosing and everything towards the end of this, but it's going to be real easy. You're going to love it. Now, for my genetic eggheads out there like me, you're looking at COMT or COMT, and you're going, woo, catecholamine methyltransferase. Why are you putting that in there, Dr. B? Well, if you go down the methylation rabbit hole, you're going to come across COMT. And people that have a natural inhibition on this enzyme are typically prone to anxiety, and they're also extremely sensitive to neurotransmitters. On the other hand, some people are enhanced here where it works too well. In those people, those are the people that can't shut their head off when they go to sleep. In those people, you can use ashwagandha to help. So my favorite tools for working with comped people are ashwagandha and green tea catechins, which would mean Vitanox. So for those of you that are doing genetic work and you see an issue with COMPT, you're going to want to look at ashwagandha and Vitanox. Now, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Don't forget about magnesium and zinc and your minerals, etc. But for our talk about botanicals tonight, we're going to be very specific. The other reason I'm happy that this is finally here is uh, a lot of the testing I do in the office, we're going into more of an objective technological type arena. Even though we're still using muscle testing and functional neurology, we're getting into EEG. Uh, EMG, EAV. I've got a whole bunch of crazy new stuff. Uh, if you want to see it, come by, check it out. I'll give you a tour. But for those of us who have been living on planet Earth in the last year, our immune systems have been beat on. All right. Nobody's allowed to get sick anymore. Chronic stress leads to immune suppression. Now, you'll find this in research on pro athletes who are burned out. So we know this is a mechanism, and we know that adaptogenic herbs can reverse this. So those of us that have been doing all the immune support we need, but we're dealing with all the chronic stress, you need ashwagandha. And now we can dose it effectively in the tablet. So here's your dose, at least one a day, minimum one a day. One ashwagandha forte tablet is going to be the same as roughly one teaspoon of the ashwagandha liquid. So you can already calculate the cost savings. Back in the day, we used to feel that almost nobody needed more than half a teaspoon of ashwagandha liquid. And then as the months went by and, you know, our two-week lockdown became a nine-month, 10-month, 11-month lockdown, uh, we're starting to find that a teaspoon to two teaspoons is starting to be indicated. So with the tablet, one to two tablets will get the job done nicely. And we're going to talk synergy as we go, so take some notes. But we're looking at ashwagandha forte now at one to two tabs a day to make sure that our brains don't turn to goo due to all the stress that we've been under and that our immune systems don't finally say, I'm out of here, you guys are crazy. Now I said immune systems. You have more than one immune system. I mean, the brain has its own. So, more on the brain in a moment. 
So if you want to recharge your battery, if you want a fast charger for your cells, these are your three powerhouses. Now we have them all in tablet form. Hooray! Thank you, Meteor. You've got your Eleuthero tabs. Now we have the Ashwagandha Forte tabs. And you've got Rhodiola Shizandra. I'm going to lean hard on the Rhodiola Shizandra. Okay? Can't control everything that's going on. Frankly, you can't control anything that's going on except your response to it. People are leaning on you for help. We're living in a high-tech world, but everybody wants high-touch, but we're not allowed to do high-touch, but we're doing it anyways because that's what they need. So, Rhodiola Shizandra, Ashwagandha, and Eleuthero will help you do what you got to do when you want to do it, even if you don't want to do it. Then if you say, Doc, this all sounds great, but I just don't care anymore. I'm done. Leave me out of it. Then I would recommend you get some Cataplex B. Start using three to six every couple hours and add in the Neviton at two to four a day. Then you'll start to kind of come around. Now, if you're going through this every day, you might want to have a friend or talk to somebody or get some acupuncture. But these are your prime hitters right now. If you can get all of your clients on these three herbs, we're going to start to rebuild and restore what was burnt from 2020. Okay, so here's your introduction to Eleuthero. Eleuthero is in a couple products, but it's available as an individual. It's also available as a liquid, and this is why you would use it. Now, there are, there are some good research studies that show Eleuthero is also antiviral, but the conclusion on that, like any other study right now, is we need more research. The consensus of the research is that Eleuthero helps the body build and restore energy to fight infection stronger. So anybody that's run down, you may not want to stimulate. You don't want, you don't want to beat a dead horse type of thing. Eleuthero is your herb, which is kind of where a lot of people are sitting right now. It's a great herb for post-infection recovery. We're going to have a conversation about post-viral syndrome, or PVS, at our next session. So check with Chris as far as when we're going to do that. But Eleuthero primarily is found in the astragalus complex. And don't forget about it on its own. If you're going to use it on its own, I'd recommend one to two a day minimum. My primary experience is compounding Eleuthero with ashwagandha in liquid form. But check it out. I mean, this thing does a lot of stuff. And I'm noticing that more and more when I combine liquids, I'm using more Eleuthero. So it's interesting. The other interesting piece on ashwagandha I want to make you aware of, you might skip over, is the hypothyroid piece. So ashwagandha is also found in thyroid complex. The reason it's in there is it's been shown to boost T4. Not a lot, but it has, okay? And it does pump up T3 a tick. So if somebody's on a lot of thyroid medication, they may not need a lot of ashwagandha, all right? On the label, it says, do not use with somebody with thyroid disease unless you're a doctor. Well, guess what? You're a doctor, and now you know why that's on the label. So if they're taking really high doses of thyroid medication because the doctor that put them on the thyroid medication wasn't thinking all that straight, um, you're going to make that thyroid medication work better, which is good because then they'll be able to reduce their dosages. I'm sure maybe you're not familiar that there was a recall on Nature thy Thyroid because of dosing issues. So yeah, just what's one more problem in the mix for the Great Lakes? You know, a lot of people use thyroid medication. So you can use ashwagandha to help people with thyroid issues, which makes sense because a lot of people with thyroid issues, it's technically an adrenal issue, and they need more adaptogenic support. Some stories behind rhodiola as the research flows is we're getting into more of an endocannabinoid herb. Um, rhodiola is our prime HPA herb. For those of you that like using hypothalamus extracts like hypothalamus PNG or hypothalamex, remember Rhodiola is your herbal version of that tool. It works because of neuropeptide Y and the, where it works in the brain has a lot to do with how the hypothalamus dictates pH, which is a fun story in itself. But with the ashwagandha forte, make sure you're throwing some Rhodiola schizandra with it. 
Now, one of the questions I get a lot is, hey, doc, how long should we take these herbs? Well, how long are you going to live this life? How long are you going to be under stress? You use plant medicine as long as you need it. So, like I said, the who, what, where, and when, Mediherb did that. The why, that's up to us. You and I are under a tremendous amount of pressure right now, not only as small business owners, but as providers to help people. Rhodiol is one of those tools you should be using every day. I really don't think there's an upper limit either. So in general, the rhodiola shizandra, we would run one twice a day. Go ahead and run two twice a day if you need more. I think you're going to find, though, that adding the ashwagandha forte to the rhodiola shizandra is going to even things out a bit. And as you know, if you read the label, Mediherbs rhodiola is definitely guaranteed to have the rosevins and solidricides. A lot of the other stuff on the open market right now does not. So if you don't see it on the label, it's not in the product is what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> if you don't know what immune senescence is, it's an anti-aging concept. <clears throat> One of the theories behind aging is that your immune system says, I'm not doing this anymore. You guys are crazy. And then things like cancer happen. So echinacea and rhodiola are really good to battle the wear and tear on the immune system. And I can't imagine another time in recent history where our immune systems have been under so much burden. That being said, I know a lot of us are using immune products right now. <clears throat> um, you know, back in March, we talked about some concepts and strategies for supporting the immune system. And what's wonderful is our patients are doing it and it's working. And I got a research study today from Taiwan in Bloomberg News that shows that the Taiwanese government has approved Andrographis paniculata as a chief drug in the treatment of COVID-19. You can check out, uh, I posted that all over social media. So yeah, the Taiwanese government okayed the use of ashwagandha for the treatment of COVID-19. Of course, we didn't see that anywhere in the media today. I had to go digging for that. Kudos to a doc in Iowa who shared that with me this morning. So yay for ashwagandha. Yay for andrographis. Yay for cat's claw. Hopefully you've tried the new cat's claw forte. But uh, ashwagandha does impact the immune system. And as you'll see, it's really potent for anybody that's been under a viral burden. Well, Cat's claw is good for that too. Cat's claw also protects your brain against the brain's immune system. So studies on injectable immunity have shown that some people end up with neuroinflammation from injectable immunity. Hopefully you know where I'm going. Anybody that's going to receive injectable immunity should be using cat's claw. Okay. Also astragalus and ashwagandha. So these are the top hitters that I would pair with ashwagandha if I was formulating. We have all of these available. If you don't know where the saffron's hidden, that's in the Neviton. Bell cap's in the Neviton as well. It's also in ashwagandha complex. St. John's wort's on its own. It's also in Neviton. It's also in Vironon. You know where Bacopa is. It's in Bacopa complex. What about turmeric? Well, word on the street is that the ashwagandha forte is going to be the new turmeric forte. We've said that about black, black cumin seed forte as well. So black cumin seed made the list. Hopefully you're using it. If not, I'm going to tell you why you should. All right. Nigella. Sativa. That's black cumin seed. Check out what that thing does. Essentially, anybody with leaky gut, thyroid issues, or a transient immune system needs black human seed. Anybody who says, <clears throat> I'm just sick and tired of taking care of myself, this is exhausting, probably want to look at black human seed, which is nigella. Any histamine-related inflammation. And you've probably noticed that allergies never really went away this year. 
So anybody with chronic year-round allergies should be looking at black cumin seed. Anybody with sinus stuff, gut stuff, gallbladder, skin. Man, I don't know what's wrong with our medical system right now, but nobody can diagnose a skin issue to save their life. People get dry skin this time of year. Black cumin seed. Now, a clinical pearl for black cumin seed with skin is to also pair it with the black currant seed oil. All right, so that's an easy pair. Um, for our discussions tonight, I'm going to say that black cumin seed can pair with ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is going to make black cumin seed work better. Okay. Now, I bring astragalus into this because, again, we're finding more and more about these plants. And basically, I've, I hear a lot of docs confuse astragalus with ashwagandha, so I want to help set you straight. If you want to be fancy and cool, you could call astragalus milk vetch, but don't do that. That really confuses people. So ashwagandha is an adaptogen. Astragalus is more of a chi tonic. Uh, particularly for the liver and the spleen. And a lot of people right now need this. So the astragalus complex has astragalus, the eleuthero, and echinacea. So if you're looking for that immune home run post-viral combo, it's going to be the ashwagandha forte with the astragalus complex. Uh, two twice a day in astragalus, and then one, one to two times a day in the ashwagandha forte. Mm -hmm. Anybody that has had any viral myocarditis needs to use astragalus and probably ashwagandha. Okay? Didn't mean to jump. Specifically, it's a chi tonifier. So if you're dealing with diarrhea, fatigue, just don't care anymore, you're constantly getting sick, but you're not getting all the way sick, you know, you get a little <laughs> sniffle, sniffle. Oh, God, don't do that in public. Um, it does tonify the lung chi. So if you've got as astragalus or astragalus liquid, one of the combos I've been making lately is astragalus, ashwagandha, and eleutherococcus in equal parts. And then I just add a pinch of liquid ginger. You mix all that up and pour it into some hot water and drink it like a tea. It totally opens things up. Uh, I call it a, a little bit of all right. If you're looking for a cup of all right, the astragalus, ashwagandha, eleuthero, and a pinch of ginger. Uh, what's interesting about 2020 is I found myself doing a lot more Chinese medicine than I've ever done. And I think it makes sense when you look at what astragalus does. Improves bile flow, reduces stress-related digestive issues. It's hepatoprotective. It's a renal protective. It's just an awesome plant all around. It's one of the chief plants you should be looking at for anybody recovering from an infection. All right. Back to ashwagandha. So we talked about the withanolides. Mediherb is guaranteeing us that in each tab we're getting 10 milligrams of withanolides. Now, the main with analyte is called withafarin A. Not that anybody cares, but somebody out there does because they wrote it down. So we know that in each tab, we're going to get 10 milligrams. In each teaspoon of ashwagandha liquid, you're getting roughly 10 milligrams. So pretty potent. We know the testing's there. The tablet just opens the door for us to use it in so many different ways. And they can understand why they made it. We've got a lot of other tools we've talked about. Uh, I'll throw in tribulus here as well. Uh, I heard something interesting from a gentleman, patient of mine, who's probably one of the fittest patients I know. He said when he's on a date, he has erectile dysfunction. But when the date's over, it rebounds, and now he's stuck with an erection. The ashwagandha can help fix that. So any performance anxiety or stress-related ED, you're going to want to use ashwagandha. And if you can get tribulus, add in the tribulus. But for now, use the ashwagandha and the rhodiola ginseng for that male component. And look at things like nitric oxide, cellular integrity, um, 
stress, medication, and all that stuff. You know, the usual. If we're mentioning the adrenal complex here, that's your licorice and Ramania. Absolutely. I mean, who can't get enough of that? The rhodiola ginseng is indicated, but I'm going to lean hard on the rhodiola schizandra. Okay. In the download documents, there is a phytotherapist perspective. Um, I'm going to take from that and go through this with you. The people that produce these documents are world-renowned herbalists. I mean, these people study this stuff. And we get to use it and we get the benefit from it. So there are the highlights on ashwagandha. Makes you stronger physically and mentally. We could probably use that. Resistance to disease, check. Nurse reproduction, why not? Enhance life. I love it when plants enhance life. Let's do it. In the research, it's shown that it does all these things based on these dosages. Why are the dosages important? These dosages are based on the whole herb equivalent. One tablet of ashwagandha gives you four grams of a whole herb equivalent. That's why it's called forte. So one tab is four grams. So for kids, based on the literature, you would do two grams. That will be half a tablet. If you're uh, like Grandpa Simpson, elderly, or like most of the people in Washington trying to run for their lives because they're They've been in power for way too long. They need to get a real job like Nancy. Three to 10 grams. So if you're trying to help senior, anybody over 70, basically, we're looking at three to 10 grams. Well, at four grams per tab, that's easy. You're going to run two tabs. It should hit the sweet spot. Okay. Now it gets weird here. There has been research on insomnia in ashwagandha. But the key there is you need the withanolides. So you're looking for roughly 30 milligrams of withanolide a day. Well, that's going to get tricky. The good news is each tablet is guaranteeing 10 milligrams. So if you're going to use ashwagandha for sleep, make sure you start with two tablets. Okay. Um, when you look at things from the company Life Extension, you know, you pick up a magazine and you start reading and you're like, man, I want to take all these things. But they don't tell you the dosages. So when you look up what you have to take, you realize, i got to take 24 capsules. It's because their mm -hmm. stuff is weak. At MediHerb, they don't do weak. So two to three tablets will be the marker for insomnia. Now, that being said, you might want to create some synergy here using things like kava. All right. A lot of good stuff going on. Some things that caught my eye when I was looking at that, looking at this particular plant, um, was that you can use this in arthritis as well. So this becomes a huge tool now to use with things like Boswellia complex and turmeric forte. I want you to start thinking arthritis is an itis. That's inflammation, which is governed by the adrenals. So anything that's going to support adaptogenic health can improve the itises. It's been studied in rheumatoid itis. Again, two a day. All right, now I'm not saying this. This is just a literature review, so don't throw me under the bus. I've already been there, done that. Although under the bus is kind of comfortable right now. Okay, for my eclectic practitioners out there, you know who you are because you've already communicated. In Ayurvedic medicine, or Ayurvedic philosophy or healing, we have a Medhya Rasayana. It's a mouthful. But any herb that fits into that category reduces stress, improves mental health, reduces anxiety and tension. Aha! Well, that's what ashwagandha does. For its maximum effect, they're recommending that you take the plant extract with food. So any form of fat is going to be fine. Um, there's no real rationale in the science behind that. But at this point, I'm going to suggest that you take ashwagandha with a meal. Okay, globally, there's some weird stuff going on because this isn't just an India situation, which like turmeric is not just an India situation. Uganda is reporting that it, they use ashwagandha to treat that. In Tibet, they use it as a nervine tonic. Woohoo! 
If you know anybody from Tibet, they usually don't need nervine tonics. Their nervous systems are spectacular. And so they use ashwagandha to go to the next level. But one of the things I've noticed in brain research when you're looking at uh, alpha waves and theta waves, ashwagandha can help improve theta wave activity, which will then lead you into better sleep. And so that's why in the Middle East in Arabic medicine, they talk about it as a sedative and a hypnotic because I'm going to tell you right now, ashwagandha can be used to improve meditation. Okay. South Africa, not just famous for the new COVID variant, but it's also using ashwagandha as a tonic. Okay. Right. Wonderful. Who's got chronic stress? Me, 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 me. Who doesn't? Any inflammatory stress will respond well to ashwagandha. I love using liquid ashwagandha in kids and moms who are having a hard time nursing. But wait, doc, you can't use herbs with kids in pregnancy and nursing. Yes, you can. You just have to know what you're doing. Ashwagandha is safe. Uh, straight up as safe as tap water, which isn't always safe. But ashwagandha is safe. So, kids failure to thrive. Ashwagandha. Who else is failure to thrive? Anybody post chemo? Post viral? Kids with anemia, anybody recovering from severe abuse, PTSD, traumatic brain injury. Okay. Anybody else waiting for the next episode of Game of Thrones to come, but it will never come. That's post-traumatic stress. You're stuck with the Mandalorian, which won't be back for a while. Okay. So, all right. The itises do well with ashwagandha. Failure to thrive. Improves nursing. If there's no with analytes, it's not going to work. So if a patient brings you something with ashwagandha, so I'm already taking ashwagandha, you can say, well, I've, there's no with analytes in here that we can tell, so it's not going to work. So I'm not even going to talk to you about it. Kids in nursing do really well with ashwagandha, post-viral syndrome, which we'll, we'll do a whole hour on later on. Um, HIV, found some good research on that, HIV and addiction. And if you've listened to any of my work on COVID, you know there, there might be a connection here. So ashwagandha, ashwagandha, ashwagandha. Now, the W could also be pronounced as a V. So if you're working with patients of Indian descent, you might want to pronounce it as ashwagandha, or else they might not understand you, the communication tip. Um, Canton and Novi, that's where I learned it. Okay, and the cannabinoid system. We've mentioned this already, but if you're using endocannabinoid support like hemp oil, consider adding the ashwagandha to it. Makes it work better. More and more research coming out about different herbs that work with the endocannabinoid system. And don't forget things like evening primrose or black currant seed oil. At the end of the day, as a practitioner, and we're not getting together live, you've got me trapped in my wine cellar doing my best pandemic wine dance. You also have access to a lot of other resources. So go ahead and cherry pick the Medier website and check out the Modern Phytotherapist, the clinical compendiums and all those things. There's a lot of information there um, and they're all searchable. So if you have a question or something pops into your head, use those resources. Those are these things. And the research, there is a ridiculous amount of research out there, but the 2020 research has been a little skewed I'm liking the research coming out of Israel right now. They're doing some interesting work on plant medicine. Like I said, Thailand is now showing andrographis can be used in COVID as a drug. The Chinese have shown astragalus is very effective uh, and rhodiola. And the Russians are doing their own research. And you got to love Russian research, right? How'd you like to argue with a Russian researcher? No, thank you. What I want you to remember is your sum total of clinical experience, right? Your patients teach you. So if somebody brings you a product with ashwagandha, go ahead and research it. Look that up. I'm going to guarantee it's probably garbage unless it says that there's X amount of withanolides on the labels. And listen to how your patients respond to these things, okay? Your patients are your best teacher. Of course, so is your family. So if you want to experiment, See what happens. You're not going to hurt them. Um, ashwagandha is one of those plants that should be part of our daily routine now. So I know all of you are using turmeric. 
a lot of you are probably using some immune support like andrographis. But it's time to add the ashwagandha in. And I use ashwagandha daily in multiple liquid recipes that I have. I'm super happy to only take one tablet now instead of 10 milliliters of different liquids. So thank you, MediHerb, for all the extra flexibility. And as we go into 2021, here's a good quote to remind you that today was insane, but freedom isn't free. And sometimes you got to stand up to bullies, particularly medical bullies. 